Broads Media. Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman. That's right. Now listen, before we jump into the show, we're on a mission to continue growing Broads Media in every way possible. I want to let you all know that Sports Talk with Broads is available for you on all podcasting platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. And you can leave a five-star rating and a review, and that will go a long way. I can't thank you all enough. I really enjoy reading those, so thank you. And we have something phenomenal starting March 28th, which is opening day. Coffee with Broads is back. Join the Broads Media membership here on YouTube for $4.99 a month, and you will have access to Coffee with Broads live streams every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. It'll be laid back, super chill, and very interactive with you and the chat. And there's a Broads Media Discord channel that is currently active where we will communicate live when games are going on, when news drops and all that. We kind of talk when it all happens. And nothing's changing. It's just an added bonus. And I'm looking forward to starting Coffee with Broads live streams again March 28th. And make sure if you're interested, you grab your membership today down below in the description. Thank you all so much, and I will stop talking now so you can enjoy the show. Good thing my wife begged me to watch The Bachelor before I recorded my pod because I would have wrapped up, and then I would have started to upload to YouTube, and before I knew it, C.J. Gardner-Johnson would have popped up on my feed from Adam Schefter, and I would have lost my shit. She said, come on, let's watch it earlier, please, please, and I said, fine, fine, we're getting to hometowns, I'm all sucked into this, three beautiful women left, which one is he going to choose, and I'm like, okay, fine, you you got me. You got me. I, I'm kind of all in, okay? I kind of want to see badly. Fine. And then, okay, Howie said, let's do it now. And then we'll let Broads win for once. Thank you. Thank you, Howie Roseman. What a day, too. All right, because I thought what I'd be saying was Devontae Parker, and I'd have to try and convince the world that he's not as bad as everybody says he is. There are some out there that think that he can't do anything at all, which I disagree with, as a fifth option in an offense behind Barkley, the new shiny toy, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard. Yeah, I promise you, if he ends up being your third wide receiver, I'm not locking it in, but if you do draft someone and you want them to be the third wide receiver, Devontae ends up beating him out, I wouldn't be surprised and he can do damage in that role, in that role, in that role, in that role. Be very clear, in that that role in that role which is more along the lines of the other team's fourth best defender is on them because you have to focus on not getting destroyed by AJ Brown and by the way if you want to throw one of Devontae or A.J. Brown into the slot and have Devontae Parker line up outside, and there you have some versatility involved and creativity in an offense, do something different. Try and get a matchup for Devontae. Get the ball in his hands. Let him work with space. A.J. Brown, how about a little bit of some yards after the catch? I'm just spitballing. You can do something different, have some new beliefs, new concepts, and he's like last on your choices if you're Jalen Hurts here. I, I don't think that that's bad at all. The New England Patriots are taking the money. You're pretty much paying a veteran minimum as it is. Like I, I can't believe some of the statements that I saw when the signing happened. You're putting expectations that he's a first-round draft pick and he's supposed to be a number one. No, he's not. And by the way, some of his offenses in New England sucked. It wasn't just with... Uh, Brian, um, what's his damn name? Come on now. Uh, Bill O'Brien, okay? It's not just about the Bill O'Brien experience at all, but he also had to deal with a man named Matt Patricia being the offensive coordinator. At first, it was a combination of Joe freaking Judge and... Uh, Matt Patricia. All right, then Matt Patricia wins the job. A defensive-minded guy, defensive coordinator. Now he's your offensive coordinator. They made no sense whatsoever. I can't pretend like him in that offense being the number one is going to compare to playing with this type of skill level and how the field looks magic and looks completely different when that's the case. I thought I'd, I'd talk C.J. Gardner-Johnson first, but I, you know, I prepared myself for that show, so I apologize. I just came out of 
the gates firing. I just decided let's start peppering you, and I have my back against the wall, and I'm going to say, hey, you know that one meme of, I forget who, to, if it's something famous and, and I can't even reference the original spot it's from, then I'm sorry, I apologize. But it's the, I think it's animated, and there's 15 swords in the guy's face. And it says, use this meme to defend somebody in sports that nobody else defends or something like that. I feel I'm the one getting targeted for liking the idea of Devontae Parker for that type of salary as a third wide receiver. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about we need help in the locker room. I find it very weird that the agencies making statements about very professional. He's excited to go to Philadelphia and win a Super Bowl and help this team win a championship. You know, it's not just somebody signing and then it's ho hum, Adam Schefter with the original report, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. This was from the agency. He's been in this league for years. He's only been on two teams in a long period of time. You know, how many years is it total? I want to get the exact number. I feel like he is a professional. He can catch the football that's thrown to him. Don't bring up an example of he dropped one pass and then said something a little bit silly towards Mac Jones, I guess. I mean, I'm sure it's frustrated to deal with what he dealt with. But he's been in the league for nine years now. Nine years. So he's going to be in his 10th season. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, this will be his 10th season in the league. There's something to that, and I think that there's professionalism that can help in this room, along with Saquon Barkley. There's a lot of shoes to fill from leadership levels, and I like this one. I, I like this Devontae Parker one a lot more than a lot of people. The biggest confusion here is going to be the spelling between him and Devontae Smith. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, we're going to get that wrong all the damn time like we get a lot lot of things wrong. I'm excited for C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Let's open the show now six minutes in when I should have led with this. Here we have C.J. Gardner-Johnson back in a Philadelphia Eagles uniform. All the beat reporters are talking about, all right, it'll be interesting to see how the contract is written out and what are the incentives. And they weren't willing to spend one year, $8 million on him previously. Why are they throwing around this type of money? Well, it's got to be structured a certain way. He was banged up in Detroit. It's not as if he played a ton of games. But I'll tell you what he brings that this team desperately lacked. A playmaker. A guy willing to go catch a damn football and snag an interception. Does it come with some noise? and some loud personality stuff. It does. It does. But I've seen this defense without it. Look, I keep it consistent. I get annoyed by A.J. Brown and Darius Slay, but if you actually utilize your eardrums and listen when I speak, I say I want them here. I'll deal with it, and I'll complain about it, but I'll deal with it knowing that the better play on the field is worth dealing with those level of personalities. Bring it on. All right, I know that there's going to be a time where maybe I don't like something that C.J. Gardner-Johnson does on the sideline, this and that, whatever, and I'll point it out, but I want him compared to not having him because last year's defense had no soul, they had no personality, and he brings that to this. He brings that element. All right, he's got that cockiness, that arrogance. Bring it on, baby, and you got to be wired differently. Jason Kelsey said it before, and I, I think that uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson sort of describes that. He is wired differently. He can handle the criticism, handle the wildness, handle all the talking points and all that stuff and here we go we're about to experience it again from a C.J. Gardner-Johnson level and I'm stoked and I thought it was very interesting that the way Adam Schefter reported it was this safety slash nickel Avante Ma uh, no. that's not what he said because then he'd be doing a horrendous job like me what was really stated was C.J. Gardner-Johnson safety slash nickel is returning to the Philadelphia Eagles. Why'd he throw nickel in there? Where's he getting his information? I know one Howie Roseman. What does Howie Roseman say? i tell you exactly what Adam Schefter tweets. So Adam Schefter tweeted what Howie Roseman told him to say, and then I see a few people nationally put DB out there. There's reasons why. Because at one time,
time, he was able to play nickel, and then he was able to play safety, and we saw him here at safety, but with the Avante Maddox news, and you're still trying to figure out what you're doing there, well, now you can put C.J. Gardner-Johnson on the field in different areas, and then maybe apply a safety. Like, okay, I know it's not going to be Justin Simmons. I'm messing around on Twitter when I said, hey, look at the wording, all right, with the eye popping emoji, don't rule it out. Why did they say nickel? But no, I don't expect it to be Justin Simmons, and they're going to do something in the slot, I believe, and primarily view C.J. Gardner-Johnson as a safety. It's just an option if need be. You never know what can happen. They may bring back Avante Maddox at a lower hit and a lower rate and different financially and have him be that number one guy and then have a backup plan, which is move C.J. Gardner-Johnson into the nickel and then have uh, something that you can slide in at safety or just have somebody who can go behind Avante Maddox and keep C.J. Gardner-Johnson at safety. I just think that they absolutely valued that and thought about the idea of multiple different positions for a team that has so many different problems. Where is this free agency going to fall? Well, maybe there is a safety they can get. Uh, Josina Anderson's talking linebacker. The Philadelphia Eagles are in on a on the linebacker market. Well, I hope so, because deep down, they're going to try and throw N'Kobe Dean down our throat that he's this special linebacker to work with. They're not going to change the philosophy there. It's in their blood to stay away from linebacker. There are previous examples of willing to open up your checkbook for a LaShawn McCoy, for some of the running backs that you believe in. Christian McCaffrey, for example, was almost a part of the Eagles organization for a reason because they thought that he put you in a whole different atmosphere and now they view Saquon Barkley very similar, but you won't find them going against what they truly believe in deep down at linebacker, you can, it's it's rare, but you can see it with running back, linebacker, not so much. Now, one thing I want to hit on before we play some audio from James Palmer, who did an amazing job on NFL Network sort of breaking down some of the Eagles acquisitions. If you are worried about Devontae Parker and the lack of separation, which I'm not saying doesn't hold any weight, but looking at last year, Here are some of the worst wide receivers in terms of separation. Michael Thomas, Amari Cooper, George Pickens, DeAndre Hopkins, DJ Chark, Calvin Ridley, T. Higgins, Michael Gallup. Now, I'm not telling you every single one of those wide receivers are amazing and insane at football. I'm saying if some of those guys were your third wide receiver and your fifth option offensively, and you can even make the argument Jalen Hurts taking off with his legs is a part of the top five weapons of your offense, which would then put Devontae Parker at sixth. So if those guys are your sixth options, T. Higgins, DeAndre Hopkins, if you're so focused on only separation rate, you're just putting way too much on that particular. Yeah, he's not elite. Many of your fifth options in your offense has some deficiency that you could pick apart. If this offense is what it's supposed to be, if Kellen Moore comes in here and he's able to really put a scheme together and make this thing thrive, Devontae Parker should be able to do well. I'm just saying, he should be able to do well. If it's what we're envisioning right now, and I'm envisioning some scary, scary, scary offensive creativity. And I'm not moving off that expectation at all. Okay, so let's listen to James Palmer here on how the Eagles were focusing on Saquon Barkley and their entire thought process through it all. This was posted at 11.30 this morning, so way before a lot of the stuff that happened today. This was more of a focus on the first day of free agency, but here's James Palmer. Kind of out of the norm for Howie Roseman to go and spend this kind of money at the running back position. And you could look at it a couple different ways. Is this panicking after struggling offensively down the stretch last year after going to the Super Bowl and being a play away from a title a year before? Is this reaching because you feel like a window's now? Well, I kind of did some digging and this is kind of what I've come up with. And maybe the more realistic answer to it is they see a generational type running back that was able to put up numbers running behind an offensive line that is nowhere near what the Philadelphia Eagles have, playing within an offense that is nowhere near from what the Eagles have, 
and they have the ability to go out there and be even maybe more dominant with him carrying the football and what comes in with Kellen Moore running this offense. My understanding is what they're trying to implement schematically in the play action game Whoa. and how they're trying to put all that together, they need a three down back Whoa. that can operate all of that. That is Saquon Barkley. That was not DeAndre Swift. That wasn't Miles Sanders before him. Barkley can fill that. Whoa, did he say play action? Did my man say play action? I like James Palmer a lot. I've had the ability in the past to have him on the best show ever a few times. He does an incredible job, and he's truly locked in. I'm telling you, the playmaking, play action, excuse me, play action. I got C.J. Gardner-Johnson on my brain going with playmaking, play action in this offense with Jalen Hurts. That tickles my fancy. Look, I got to be honest with you, all right? I don't have any problem saying that I feel Saquon Barkley can do wonders for Jalen Hurts. For some reason, if you ever bring up how others can actually help the quarterback instead of always viewing it as the quarterback has to make every single one of their players better, Better. It does work both ways, and you can even see the difference when Daniel Jones had Barkley running a certain way compared to when Daniel Jones didn't have Saquon Barkley running a certain way. Saquon Barkley's a machine, and the fact that he could run on that left side of the line, Landon Dickerson and Jordan Maialata, follow those two, let him create the space. Maybe you follow Lane Johnson's rear end as he's plowing through guys like we see Jason Kelsey do. There's two things that really get people in this town excited when it comes to offensive line play. It's Jason Kelsey hitting that second level forearm block downfield, and it's Lane Johnson doing the same fucking thing on the right side and Saquon making people miss. It's going to be crazy watching him dance, but I heard play action. Are we getting under center? Are we getting under center and running more of a traditional style with Jalen and creating more spark in the offense? That's what I heard. That's what I heard. And if, if Howie values Saquon Barkley the way I do when I close my eyes and picture an offense like that, then it's worth every penny. And it actually lines up with something that I find extremely fascinating. Joe Banner brought up that at the size of a $12 million cap hit or so for a quality star, Starter at any position is a steal. And I'm just wondering, someone who was once in all those meeting rooms, if he's now seeing what Howie's able to work with, how Howie does it, and then see the salary cap... There's ways where you can essentially steal a player, where you can work with, I'm telling you, the numbers are in an area, and the salary cap's going up so much, and this and that, and just the ability and specialty of Howie, you can get a Saquon Barkley for 12 mil, and that be a steal when it's all said and done. Just wait. And, yeah, I mean, that's why Howie Roseman is a god this time of the year. That's why Howie's season is in full effect. He's never sleeping. He's nonstop thinking about improving this football team. And it is getting a lot of new faces in-house or faces that were once here left and then now is ready to return. But C.J. Gardner-Johnson is going to be fun, man. And so is Saquon Barkley. It is. It's just going to be electric. I'm excited. I told you that I was not down. But I wasn't ready to turn the page yet. I needed the first move to happen before it would probably inspire me to get excited. And then now two days into free agency, I can't wait to see what this team is like. See, I'm harsh and I'm intense, but it's very easy to win me over. And, and if you're like, bro, you've been crushing this team for so long, this and that. I know, I know. This is what I needed, all right? It feels good again. I'm not going to bitch that they brought back CJ. I'm not going to bitch that you bring in Saquon Barkley. Yeah, they both come with some sort of question marks. What free agency pick up doesn't. You're overspent. That's what free agency is. You overspend when someone hits the market because you're competing with other teams. So you're always to some degree going to fish out a little more than maybe you would project. And that's what it's all about. So yes, CJ Gardner Johnson coming off of an injury. There's something to be said about that. Saquon Barkley giving a running back a lot of money and someone else who gets himself on the injury list and someone who has to work through all the practice reports is he practicing is he not all that stuff that's a part of this but it's it's fun again it's fun again just picturing great team 
football because I expect this squad to get their head out of their ass and there's so many good players on offense and Kellen Moore should have a good enough grasp at this where this thing looks solid all right you were you're able to pick up the the blitz you're able to block with Saquon Barkley give Jalen Hurts some time and I have no issue with saying that it would be great for Saquon Barkley to help out Jalen Hurts after somewhat of a down season so let Jalen Hurts cook let him utilize Saquon Barkley out of the backfield let him work in space it's going to be a blast I'm telling you the link is going to be insane the second Saquon Barkley runs into that end zone for the first time now let's take a listen on his assessment of CJ Gardner Johnson yeah, this makes me feel good, Yam, because I've been saying his name on NFL Network throughout the entire day. This is one of the players the Eagles had their eye on as they rebuild their secondary. That nickel position that he can play is extremely important with the release of Avante Maddox. Also can play the safety spot, do a variety of things in that secondary for Vic Fangio, who now takes over this defense. I remember talking to him. Remember, he was added to this Eagles team a couple of years ago, late in the year, right before the season started. And he told me it just felt like home being in this locker room with these guys. So he now returns to this Eagles defense. And it's a big upgrade for them in a secondary that needs more pieces added. And they will continue to add through free agency in the draft, to my understanding. To the other side of the ball, and Saquon Barkley, the big signing they had on the first day of free agency. I, kind of asked around and the big reason why I was told this happened Yam is specifically because of what's getting implemented by Kellen Moore with this offense he specifically fits the scheme and the play action that they're trying to implement moving forward it requires a three down back why not get one of the best three down backs in all of football to go out and be the guy who is able to run this for you as well as being able to be used in the passing game the Eagles value the ability to run a linebacker versus a running back in space Take advantage of that advantage, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. How he loves the idea of a running back versus a linebacker in space. And there's plenty of reasons to love that idea with Saquon Barkley, right? Because you're going to take that lunch money. But you know how important that is. Let me get this straight, right? And this is a knock on Howie. So Howie is expressing to the media how much they want to see Kellen Moore use Barkley in open space, match up against a linebacker, knowing that you can kill a team and take their lunch money, kick them in the teeth, knock out every single fucking tooth, send them to the orthodontist, $50,000 bill for dentures, and the list goes on and on where your life is changed forever. You're on a date, you're on Tinder, you're talking to someone, your teeth fly out in the middle of the bar now you got to pick them up it's dirty someone spilled a miller light on them now it's all sorts of problems you got to get them cleaned um your your insurance doesn't cover it it's a whole thing all because you know that your running back can expose a linebacker in space. If you know how killer that is, then why do you get bum nobodies to play linebacker for you? You see teams all the time. Maybe you're delusional because you see teams destroy you nonstop that you think that's the norm. But it's not the norm if you get a competent linebacker, I'm just saying. Now, not many can stop Saquon Barkley. You also have a talent and a premier talent at the position. But I'm just saying, uh, I find it ironic that he knows how much that can kill a team, yet he doesn't look at it the other way like that whatsoever. Patrick Queen goes to the Steelers. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. I would have loved every second of it, but unfortunately, it's not a world that we're in. All right? It's just not a world that we're in. Let's go to the Anytime Hotline, shall we? Let's take some calls. Let's go to Ethan, who chimed in after the C.J. Gardner-Johnson news. What do you got for us, Ethan? What's good, bro? It's A-plus for the Eagles, man, so far in this free agency signing period. Oh, my God. Saquon Barkley? Oh, my God. He's the best running back we've had since Shady McCoy. How can people not be happy about that? Three down back. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I'm also excited for Bryce Bryce is going to be good, too. I mean, I saw he's not as good against the run, but he's good. He can put pressure on the quarterback. That's a good signing. He's young, and he can develop into a better run stopper. And, man, I'm excited about Saquon Barkley. But C.J. Gardner-Johnson back on the team, that is the one. 
I am most excited for him. Oh, my God. Such a dog. Dog mentality. We missed him so much last year, and now he's back. In my mind, he never said anything. <laughs> A-plus for the Eagles. Go Birds. I love that. I do want to hit on something with Bryce Huff. So Dave Zangaro of NBC Sports Philly put out a post, and it was a couple of stats to look at if you're not familiar with who Bryce Huff is. And Huff played just 42% of the Jets' defensive snaps in 2023, and his career high was 51% of the snaps back in 2021. So he obviously flourishes, though, in those limited snaps. So listen to this. Just two players in the last 10 years had double-digit sacks on fewer snaps than Bryce Huff. Brandon Graham was one of them in 2022. So he had 10 sacks and 480 snaps, which is the third best over the last 10 years. I'm happy for CJ, though, and I'm happy that we get to experience some of that swag again because we need it so bad. We have to turn the other teams over. It's killer to go through games where all night long, if you get a stop on third down, it's punt, punt, punt. Hey, we got to get a drive that starts at the other team's 20. You have to take the pressure off the offense sometimes, even though this offense is set up to be ridiculous and put up a 30 spot, put up 40 spot, put up 50 spots. Just give me a 150 burger. All right, 50 spots. I shouldn't have added an S on that. But can we get, was it the Raiders? Who was it that had 9 billion points in a game last season? Give us one of those, all right? You should have the firepower to do it. All jokes aside here, uh, you should be able to just destroy opponents by putting up so many numbers. But it would be nice for C.J. Gardner-Johnson to show his worth and pick off a bunch of interceptions and be that ball hawk so then we could even put up more. And it's first play, bang, what an emotional switch. Think if you're on the defensive side and you just had to get put on the field because your offense threw an interception. And then here's Jalen Hurts walking up to the line of scrimmage, an area that they definitely need help without Jason Kelsey is recognizing some stuff pre snap they call it out perfectly cam jurgens they run all play action good handoff no fumbling issues everything's clean and crisp you get a nice uh, bootleg oh my god and it's just a one play seven points and it's it's killer if you're on the other team oh my god oh, how are we going to stop them We're just getting started, baby. That's what I'd be saying as I'm jogging off the field, getting into the face mask of somebody else on the other squad. The link, broach, 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 broach. 65,000 of you just cheering me on. Oh, man, I could only imagine. All right, let's take another phone call here, shall we? Take everything I said yesterday, how I was cautiously out the myth back about Saquon Barkley and Bryce Huff and all that and throw that right out the fucking window. That's what I wanted. I wanted a good splash of defensive uh, positions. I wanted a safety. And guess what? We got a defensive end. We got a safety. And you know what? Josh Sweat, he might be going. Maybe. Maybe. But I think we're keeping Hassan Reddick, too. Oh, I think so. And you know what? If Justin Simmons comes along, I'm literally, you're going to see me running down naked down Broad Street. I promise. Uh-oh. See you, Rhodes. Dangerous. Dangerous stuff out there. You better watch out on the streets. You're going to see some naked people running around. I don't think they're going to get Justin Simmons. I don't think that that's the case. But what did you bring up? Oh, Josh Sweat. Yeah, it seems like Josh Sweat's on his way out. Apparently, he posted something on Instagram. And maybe he's the one that goes. And you do a little Bryce Huff, Hassan Reddick combination, which is what I mentioned yesterday. And I would like that a lot. That would be my preferred. And we'll see what Josh Sweat gets you back in return. Because if you trade Reddick, the people who are trying to acquire him know that they also have to pay him. Josh Sweat maybe is more intriguing from a salary cap perspective and also age perspective. Um, just the way that people view you know, what they're willing to spend their money on moving forward. But I like it. I like it a lot. I like the idea of Hassan Reddick and Bryce Huff. I'm okay with trading Josh Sweat, and we'll see what ends up happening here on day three. I'm excited, though. It seems like every day brings a new feeling for me, and it's all trending in the positive direction, which has not been the case for months now. All right, everybody, I love you guys to death. Thank you all so much, and we will be talking very soon on the next one.